Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Katrina Sawa is going to help us discover the eight secrets to a consistent money-making business. Katrina, in order to help us get to know you personally, I would like to ask you four questions. Number one, what are the top qualities that attract you to other people? Sure, that's easy. Authenticity, you gotta be real, you gotta be yourself. Uh, integrity, um, I'm very good at intuitively feeling if someone's kind of being fake or not. I've been through that before. So integrity, honesty, and then a positive, upbeat personality and energy. I like someone who's full of life and not the Debbie Downers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, or the or the the Dick Downers. <laughs> Question number two. You said that, not me. <laughs> what 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 was the biggest challenge, biggest personal challenge you've ever had to overcome? The biggest personal challenge was when I was married to my starter husband, uh, and I had started my business during our marriage, and learned that he wasn't as entrepreneurial thinking as I thought. And he really was not supportive of me being an entrepreneur. And I had to, after two years of really trying to make it work uh, and crying myself to sleep every night, I had to leave the marriage and go out on my own with a single income household, still in the roller coaster of cash flow. And that was the hardest thing, but I'm glad I did it because you never want to settle for someone who's not supportive of you. Did you actually call him your starter husband? I did. <laughs> I, I love I love that term. Okay, way to go. We're getting some great terminology here. Now I have a keeper you know, husband. <laughs> oh, starter husband and a keeper husband. Well, number three, what's the best piece of advice, personal advice anyone has ever given you? Uh, well, I think uh, it has to do with my business. It was uh, build the plane while you're flying it meaning don't go off and create some program and then hope people are going to buy it, launch a live thing, record it, and then boop, there's your program. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the fourth and last question is, what's one of the resources that you, move, move, that you use frequently? Besides Zoom, because I live there, um, my website is the hub of my business. So I have 200 pages on my website. I create new pages every week with different things that I'm doing, like I'm in a giveaway or I'm a speaker here and there. And there's new classes, new everything, and everything needs a thank you page and a system behind it with email autoresponders. And the website needs to be your hub of your, hub of your business. So. All right. Do you have any unusual... Uh, appliances at home that most people don't have that you find invaluable? <laughs> appliances? Um, hmm, my, <laughs> no, I don't think I have anything unusual. I'm not, I'm a very techie at work person, but I'm not a techie when I'm at home. My husband does all the shopping, the grilling, the cooking. Um, and so I'm very blessed that way. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, uh, audience, participants, if you have a uh, question, please type it into the chat in the course of Katrina's presentation, and then I'll pose it to Katrina. Uh, secondly, if you can, please turn on your video. Uh, Katrina needs energy too, and she gets the energy from you. If she is looking at a pile of black rectangles with names in the middle, that's not very uh, energizing. So help her out by coming on camera. Uh, 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 please stay muted, except, uh, and then type the questions. We talked about that. Now you're going to be sent a link to the recording of Katrina's talk in a few hours. Uh, but I nevertheless encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes is going to massively increase the content that you're able to absorb. Katrina, are you ready to knock our socks off? Yeah, I hope uh, so. You might not even be wearing socks or shoes wherever you're landing, wherever you're sitting. <laughs> well, you take it away. The show is now all yours. Okay. 
Thanks, you guys. And as I was listening to all your intros and all the advice you're giving, this is a pretty smart little smart group here. Um, my talk may not, okay, so there's a lot of things we're gonna talk about in this very short time. Some things are going to apply to you and maybe some things won't, but listen for the nuggets, you guys, because I talk about everything from the big picture down to the nitty gritty, from your life to your business, all in this one talk. So um, just hang tight. And I am, someone pointed it out in the chat earlier, that I am a very kind of a blunt in your face kind of gal because I believe there's life is too short. So the faster we can figure out how to make more money and make a bigger impact and get to the lifestyle that we really want to live, I hope you guys are with me because the faster is better. Why do we want to take the slow road? So let's just cut out the noise and, and get to the heart of what I think you really want to be doing uh, to help you grow your business. So if you want to enjoy a smooth running, consistent money-making business, and that's why you're here, then drop a yes in the chat. <laughs> Um, and then if you want uh, that consistent revenue generating business without the roller coaster of cash flow, please, the roller coaster of cash flow sucks. One minute you make a ton of money and the next month you're like, ah, where's the money, right? So let's get to consistent revenues. That's what we want. Yes, right? Um, although these roller coasters are very fun, but <laughs> those are not. Today, we're going to cover why you want to focus on making a lot more money. Hopefully, you, I will encourage you to want more. I want you to want more, more for your life, for your family, for your clients, for your, for your retirement. I want you to want more because you deserve it. You deserve it, but also it's actually pretty easy to make more money. And when you make more money, you make a bigger impact because you're helping more people. So if you're out there to help a lot of people, you can't just go out there and eat top ramen, you guys. You have to serve yourself first and then serve from your saucer, okay, once the cup overflows. And we're going to give you the eight secrets. And there will be some slides that I'll say you can take a screenshot of. So if you want to take a screenshot or a camera shot, you can, um, because I have a lot of stuff on some of these slides. They're, they're mostly like infographics, there's a lot of them. So, um, and then we're going to talk about things you can do to get started. So if you want to take a snapshot of this one, you can. This is uh, uh, my eight secrets in a nutshell. And we're going to be going through a lot of these in examples uh, through the talk. So know your big picture vision, your goals, and believe in it's possible. Believing it's possible is sometimes the hardest people for problem for people. Um, and sometimes your goals are not high enough. We're going to talk about money in a minute. Develop the right pricing and offerings for you and your ideal lifestyle. I heard someone talk about asking for pricing strategies. I love talking pricing strategies. And I would say charge as much as you can say without stuttering please. Okay. When you study, you lose the sale. So charge higher than you, as high as you can, because there's billions of people on this planet and we all just need a little bit of those people. Okay. To be very successful. Then exude massive confidence to attain positive expert positioning. We have to be confident in ourselves to put that big humongous picture of ourselves on the website. If our business is about ourselves, we have to be confident about ourselves to put 17 books behind you on your Zoom room because it shows your expertise. You have to be confident to surround your positioning, your website, your Zoom room, uh, your social media profiles, and how you show up to calls and events. That is your positioning. What people think of you, their perception of you is your positioning. And you really want to watch that because a lot of people have gotten lazy during COVID and lazy with Zoom. Please don't do that because your ideal prospect could be in this room, okay? Um, implement smart, consistent, yet ever-evolving marketing practices. There are so many different ways to market. It's like head spinning, right? You don't have to do them all. That's the key. You can pick like three things, you guys. You don't have to do as much as you think you do or as much as everybody wants to tell you to do. All right, I'm gonna tell you how to simplify it and cut down on your to-do list. And then you're gonna enlist systems, strategies, and team to stay organized. I know some people say, well, I can't afford to hire an assistant yet or a web person yet, so I'm doing it all myself. Well, stop it. I would say stop it. And here's my little stop it sign because you can't do it all yourself and you will make a lot more money once delegating gets addicting, okay? 
Then embracing the right technology to make your life easier. Your website, uh, it really needs to have a lot of functionality, not just kind of a few pages on Wix, okay? A lot of functionality, please. And yes, every two or three years, you're going to have to update that website and build a new website because technology changes. So put that money that you're going to invest on those things into your need number. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. Okay, sustain a positive money mindset with swift money making decisions. We got to make quick decisions. Money follows speed. So if you're one of those that likes to sit on the fence and think about things a little bit longer, or I got to pray on it until God tells me what to do. No offense. God is important. But please make decisions faster, as fast as you can, as soon as you get the information, because you are slowing your success down. And sometimes it's, do, it's happening subconsciously. Subconsciously, you're slowing yourself down by not making a decision or not doing something that you need to do. So be careful with that and really be aware when you're resistant to something like that. You have to become more aware as a business owner. And then don't settle for anything less than 100% personal happiness, love, and support, even if it's your, your, your significant other, um, <laughs> or my dad was one of those as well, so unfortunately. Um, so what motivates you guys? You have to stay motivated every day, right? I mean, when I first started my business and I didn't have a lot to do, it was hard not to go sit and watch Oprah on the sofa um, when I wasn't really busy. Right. And yes, this was 20 years ago. So Oprah was still on TV. <laughs> but what motivates you? Right. What motivates me is my family. I want to have more time off. I want to do three or four day weekend getaways in our trailer that we bought last year because we were so tired of sitting home. I want to be able to give back. I want to give hundred dollar or two hundred dollar tips to the waitress when we go out to eat. I want to travel whenever I want. I want to have plenty of money in the bank. And yes, I need a bigger house because of COVID. We've really expanded. Okay, like, not like physically our bodies. Well, that might happen too, but our, you know, where our space. So what motivates you to do more of what you want? I really want you to get excited about making more money because that means you're making a bigger impact. You're helping more people. I have a great need number worksheet. I'll put that link in the chat in a minute, but it is on that free trainings page that I put in way before. So it was way up ahead. I put the free trainings page in there and it's a four page worksheet. It's absolutely free, but it's going to help you think about the things you're not putting in your monthly goal. So if your goal, uh, like I would love to see what your goals are. Like, do you have a monthly revenue goal? Okay. Is it 5,000? Is it 2,000? Is it 20,000? What is your monthly revenue goal? If you want to put it in the chat, this is really, really important um, because I want to challenge you and maybe add another 2,000 to it or 3,000 because some of you might need to hire a coach. I don't care if it's me or someone else, but you might need a coach on social media. You might need a business coach. You might need a, a new website. You might need a virtual assistant or two or three. Okay, you might need to join a couple organizations for networking. You might need to uh, pay to play. And, and I paid to play on speaking gigs before. You might want to go and travel to a conference. Well, you need money for that. So you, you can't do the bare minimums um, with your goals. You need to add and pad it a little bit. Because if you ask the universe and say, hey, I want to make $5,000 a month, but then that's barely enough to pay your bills, then that's probably all you're going to get, right? So I would say seven or 8,000 and it's okay if you don't make it and you can't feel guilty for not making your goal every month either. You just keep pushing for it and keep pushing for it. My goal has been $350,000 a year for the last three or four years and I haven't made it, but it's a big leap from like, it's a pretty big leap from where I am now, but it's, that has been my goal. If I don't hit it, I'm not beating myself up. Okay. I'm telling you, honestly, that's my goal. And I mean, I make a good amount of money, but you got to stretch it a little bit, stretch it a little bit, you guys. I really want you to stretch, okay? All right, so here are some characteristics of successful entrepreneurs. I added this slide in quickly because there was a lot of you that were newer in business. And so sometimes some of the mistakes I see people making when they're newer in business is you do try to do it all yourself. You're resistant to asking. You don't ask. So thank you, Roger, for putting some people in the hot seat and having them ask for suggestions and feedback. It's a really great thing to do on a call like this because you never know what kind of advice you're going to get. So ask, you guys. Sitting in a decision, indecision is not a good thing. There's a whole bunch of things on this. I'm not going to go through every single one, 
But uh, people that are really successful invest often. They rely on others to support them. They always keep sight of the big picture. They're always constantly learning. They think how to leverage and automate things and get more efficient and profitable, okay? So that's those are some characteristics. Um, I'll show you a couple pictures. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on me, but yeah, this is my, my keeper husband, Jason, and my bonus daughter, Riley. And she just turned 13. So you can imagine the next five years of my life is going to be a living hell as a teenager in the house. Um, but we're trying to, we're trying to do the best we can. Um, if all I ever did, I mean, I, some of you have a huge bucket list, but all I ever did, if all I ever did was just serve clients, which in my events or my mastermind or on calls like this is teach, teach, teach what I know, the mistakes I've made, what not to do. Those are the kind of things I love to do. That and travel and hang out with my family, that would make my life complete for the next 40, 50 years or however long. Okay, so that's me. Um, a little official stuff. It's my 20 year anniversary. I've been in a lot of media and a lot of publicity. I've been on a lot of stages. I've had a lot of events and I've had a lot of fun. And I really started with nothing but networking and follow up in my local area because there was no social media when I started my business. So I would hoof it around town to networking events. And I was in cha four chambers of commerce, BNI and a women's networking group. And that's all I did that and follow up. And um, so I do a lot of fun stuff now. My business has evolved over time. Uh, I do publishing now. I do uh, web and techie services. I uh, run the International Speaker Network. Roger's been a speaker before. And um, I just love to teach, teach, teach. Um, but So that's a little bit about me. And I used to be in jobs that I hated with an unsupported marriage. I used to waste a lot of time in the wrong, with the wrong things. I too was a, um, a do-it-yourselfer and <laughs> uh, got my butt kicked a lot from uh, wasting time with that. Um, I've worked way too hard and burn out when I was single in between marriages. That's all I did. I was a workaholic. And now I have really good boundaries in my life, which I think is important when you set boundaries. Uh, to make sure that your clients don't take over your time and you also set time for your family and date nights or looking for love if that's something that you're looking for. I mean, we I talk about the love side of your life as well as the business side of your life because of my past and my story. Um, once I found out that um, you know, the, the love side of my life was huge. Like when I was in between marriages, I had a huge hole in my heart uh, because I didn't feel supported and loved. And it, it was really hard to go marketing. It was really hard to talk to people and go to networking events and follow up because I wasn't happy totally. I was unhappy in a lot of ways. So um, I know you women sometimes might understand a little bit more than men, but men, you guys have to be happy too. So if you're not happy in your personal life, you have to take time and focus on that, whether it's to find love or to improve your marriage or to get out of the marriage that may not be supportive. Um, please look at that because that will affect how much you're doing in your business. And that's step number eight is what we're talking about. Um, and so, yeah, I've had a lot of roadblocks. A lot of people say, well, I'm too busy now, or I'm taking care of a parent or yada, yada, like COVID, whatever. But I've had so many issues almost every year in my business. I've had issues. I've had two total hip replacement surgeries, you guys, in one year. My husband currently went through cancer. I had to caregive for him. Now my mom's going through cancer and I don't stop. Like I, it's, it's not that I'm not devoting my time to them. I am, but I have so many systems in my business and people to help me that I don't have to be here 24 seven or even eight hours a day to make the money that I'm making. And that is my goal for you is to really figure out how to work the business when you can are on vacation or when you are taking care of a loved one or you're sick. OK, because if you are, if, it, if your income relies on you to make the sale every single day, it's going to be very, very tough for you in the long run, because I always say the what if the what if happens, you can't just hide your head in the sand. OK, so be prepared ahead of time before something happens in your life and um, because then you'll be in chaos. Right. The number one thing a mentor taught me, and this was the year that I hit six figures in my business. I went to him and I paid him $25,000 and I said, tell me what to do to make more money in my business. And he said, Katrina, just be, just be love. And I'm like, okay, great. But what do I do? 
And he's like, just be love. And I'm like, mm, I don't know what that means. And my whole mastermind, they were all just be love, Katrina. That just, you know, be, exude love. And it's the doing versus the being, right? And some of you might get that. Some of you may not because you're not in that kind of a realm. But um, so everything I say, even if it's a direct, like, don't do this, do this kind of a way, it's with love because I want you to succeed faster. I don't want you to waste time on things that I know because I've seen it a million or a dozen times are not going to work. So I am saying it with love so it can help you course correct faster. And that's why I'm doing this. Okay. Um, okay. Go. This is one you might want to take a slide up. So business models. Some of you I heard were in certain business models and you might benefit from having an additional income stream. Um, so if you want to make more money, Yes, of course, get more clients in business like the financial planners, but why not also have a book? And why not also do a speaking? Uh, and why not also maybe create some kind of online training, ebook or course or, or group program or something like that, right? So it's not just for coaches. And some of you, like, uh, I think it was uh, the gal with the energy thing, right? Maybe you want to teach something. I mean, I don't know. I just, I love to brainstorm different options for people in their business and things that you can do or sell that are complementary to what you're doing that make a lot more, um, that are easier, say, to market and sell than perhaps maybe something that you are choosing to do, okay? And this, I had some great advice from a business coach. Before I left my last job, I said, um, okay, she was asking me like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I got all these ideas, right? I'm either going to do like marketing coaching or, or consulting, or I want to run a gift basket company. I love making little gift baskets. I was in the local area, right? And thank God she said, don't do the gift basket company. Too much inventory, too much cost outlay, and you're not going to make enough money faster. And she pointed me towards the marketing consulting. Okay. Thank God she did that. And was blunt with me because it was so true that it would take him so much more energy to make a lot more money in that business. So please like ask, ask for advice, ask for directions, ask for ideas, ask for ideas. Other income generating ideas is something always good to do. Here's the sales that you want to look. If you want to make $10,000 a month, you can either sell, sell uh, let's see, uh, 200, uh, let's see, 40 things at $250 or one thing for 10,000. <laughs> Who wants the one thing at 10,000 instead of the 40 things at 200? To make 40 sales a month is not as easy uh, as you think. <laughs> I'm all, I don't make 40 sales a month. Um, so I, I know when I first started my business, someone said, well, write a book. I'm like, why would I sell a $20 thing when I can sell a 200, a 2000 or a $20,000 thing? doesn't make sense. Now, of course, I have a bunch of books because it helps leverage your expertise. But think about this when you're looking at your business models, right? Did you want me to pause for questions? <laughs> there, are, there are no questions. Okay, good. <laughs> you're obviously wowing us into silence. Okay. <laughs> I skipped this slide. Hold on. I'll come back to the other one. So it, some of you who are coaches, consultants, or people that might want to do this as a business owner, Take a picture of this slide. These are things that you can create in a high-end program. So I saw somebody that wanted to make $5,000 a month and I didn't see who that was, but one client could be 5,000 in a high-end program. It could also be 50,000. I just saw somebody's website the other day. I found her on Facebook and followed her little you know, string to her webpage uh, just because I was curious of what she was charging because she was younger than me and I'm like, huh. And then she was charging $55,000 a year for her mastermind, right? I charge way less than that. I'm like, huh, maybe I should raise my rates <laughs> is what I thought. Uh, I didn't think, who is she? She's crazy. I thought more power to her. She's getting people to pay that. She can say that without stuttering. That's awesome. I don't know if I can say that without stuttering, frankly. <laughs> but hey, right? Like, let's be happy for the people who are doing that kind of business. But you guys can create them too. You just have to get the confidence and know what to share and what people are going to buy for that amount of money. So I don't want you to discount it because what if you could create this and it doesn't, sometimes these higher end programs are easier to create than the online course. I'm just telling you because the high-end program is usually a lot more access to you. 
If you have nothing but time, like do a high-end program and get like three or four people in a ten or twenty thousand dollar program, right? Instead of trying to create all this curriculum and then they go out and sell it for two hundred bucks, like that's just insanity. So you could do both, but if you need fast cash to pay your bills today, why not do the higher end first and then go create the course? So many people out there in business, especially online marketers, are trying to create courses first when they have no list, nobody in their business, nobody in their community, hardly, not a lot of people following them. They're starting a business and they want to create and sell a course. I say, to who? Who do you want to sell a course to? You might sell it to one or two people with that many people, right? So why not go get your one or two clients at a high-end rate, then serve maybe in a group or start networking more, building your email list, get a couple more high-end clients, build more people, and then start doing maybe a group program or course. But, and I'm not saying everybody should do that. I'm just throwing it out as an idea that what some people are teaching is not necessarily what everybody needs to do. So really think about it and think about your options, okay? So the making it easy for others to buy is using systems, technology, uh, team. So you've heard all about doing funnels but um, and doing landing pages, like the one in the bottom corner, right? With little opt-in boxes. You got to have opt-in boxes. You got to have a back-end database where you're keeping your data, um, your customer database management system. So you can do email marketing and autoresponders, which are the auto emails that go after someone clicks or signs up for something on your website. You need these forms on your site on many different pages, though, not just one free gift landing page, please. Have multiple free gifts. Have multiple different topics and different learning styles. Have audios, have videos, have read uh, ebooks, have uh, in-person calls where you can have different learning styles because some people have chosen, I only want to listen to audios. I only want to do this. And so they won't be getting your free gift if it's an ebook and they don't want to read an ebook. Right. So really think outside the box and create other options for freebies, you guys. And then make sure you have easy ways to buy now or sign up for things on your website. I can't tell you how many websites I look at. I look at thousands of websites a year and I would say mm, 80 percent of them sometimes don't even have a services page or any wording that says what they do. They might have a free gift, a contact page and whatever, but it, it doesn't have like, oh, and I serve you and I help you with X, Y, Z, and, and this is what I do and this is how I can help you. I mean, the wording is not there. So, and I get that the sales copy and the wording stuff is not easy for a lot of people. It comes super easy for me. And so I love just talking through those kinds of things with people and saying, here, you should say this, and then you record it and then you write it down and you're done, right? But making these, now, let me talk about funnels really quick, though, because a lot of times people are telling you out there that you need funnel software, you need click funnels and funnel this and funnel that and funnel that, and you have to pay another thing to buy, to, to buy this to create a funnel. You can, yes, you can use those technologies, but you don't have to. So those of you who are newer, you can build one, one website with all the pages on your website all in there. You just need a marketing system over here where your database is going to be. You need a website. You really don't need anything else except Zoom. Okay. And uh, that's it. So don't let people sell you into all these other technologies that you don't necessarily need. Now, I, it's hard to blanket advice that, like that, but um, keeping it simple and keeping it lower expenses is going to help you at least get started. I remember in 2008, I had looked at my, uh, my uh, monthly expenses and I had over $1,000 in monthly recurring charges and I couldn't pay all my bills at that point. So I was freaking out, right? And so I had to delete a few and I'm like, okay, what do I really need? I need my database and my email marketing over here. I need my website, right? And of course I need my assistant, but other than that, like you don't need a lot of other technology to run your business. So be careful buying into all these other things. Okay. I'm not saying they're not good. Are you yes. open open for our first question? Our, de our, yes. our debut question? <laughs> yes. This is from Ashok and Ashok asks, uh, I, possibility of finding low fee clients is more or high fee paying clients in any given situation. 
So you're talking about the high, <laughs> high um, program versus the low. So there are high paying clients everywhere. You're just probably not asking the right questions or posing the right problem solution offers um, information <laughs> to find those people perhaps, or you're not having the right sales conversations. So low, I mean, if you're driving people to your website to buy, yeah, most people will not buy anything online unless you're pretty well known for like over two or three hundred dollars, because I call that an easy yes offer. So an easy yes offer is something usually under about two hundred bucks. That's where most of us are willing to give over our credit card to try something out, even if we haven't talked to the person or seen them speak or something. So um, but if in order to sell a high end thing, yeah, you're pretty darn sure you're going to need to have a conversation with most people, most people. OK, now there are some bigger coaches and stuff out there who sell their high-end stuff online, but they are so well-known, it's ridiculous if I said all their names, right? So I think it's I think it's easier to find, or just as easy to find a high-end client as it is a low-end client. It could just be a mindset block you have, okay? Uh, and I don't know you very personally, but, um, and selling packages, yes, you could totally sell packages. Um, it, it depends on what you're selling, Salome. I'm not sure, but um, I throw in like a whole bunch of stuff sometimes. So if I'm if I'm selling one program, I might do a buy one get one free if it's an online training. Uh, if I if I give a ticket to my li like my live three day event, I'm usually throwing in one of my two or three hundred dollar trainings as a bonus. Um, is that what you're asking? Oh, therapy practice. Yes, you totally want to sell um, packages in a therapy practice. You could sell sessions of 12 sessions or 24 sessions or something like that. Although um, I heard you say you were um, something, you were um, private pay. So if you're private pay, you actually might look into coaching business instead of therapy. I've had a, quite a few therapy clients that have transitioned into coaching business because they can literally triple or quadruple their hourly rates in the coaching business. So just saying, and we'd have to talk offline to, to do that. Um, but yeah, you can do a group program, you can do a package of things. Of course, you can do all of that. And it's good to have a variety of price points and uh, offerings for sure. Uh, Tra Tracy Blue is asking, what's an example of a mastermind program compared to an online course? So a mastermind is a good example of that slide I showed a minute ago. And uh, with the eight components, let me go back. Uh, this is a good example of a mastermind. Um, mo a lot of masterminds, though, don't include one-on-one. -on -one. Um, some do, or you get limited one-on-one. -on -one. They're usually group trainings or group calls, sometimes training, sometimes Q&A. Uh, it could be a live uh, component, like an event or an actual live mastermind retreat or something. Um, the typical format that I was already always in was like three in-person retreats a year for two or three days, plus um, a group call every month and maybe a one-on-one -on -one call every month or every other month with the lead person. Um, and then of course they would throw in other some other trainings. I kind of do mine as I throw everything in the kitchen sink. So my mastermind is unlimited one-on-one -on -one access. They can book a call anytime they want all year long, uh, two calls a month, uh, every other month, virtual days uh, for retreat days, and we're doing an in-person at the end of March as well. We're bringing it back. And then all my trainings, and they get to come to all my stuff for free, all my books, um, pretty much everything. Not a lot of people do that kind of an all-inclusive thing, though. Does that answer your question? And a course is more like a, it doesn't have access. So an online course often doesn't have access to the person who created it. It's more of a package training um, where you create the materials and then you put them out there as a DIY. Some courses are done together. I call that a group program if you're going to do it live. So if you're going to do a, a, I call it a group program or a group training, if you're going to do it live, like you're going to invite 10 or 20 people and pay you, and then you're going to talk to them every week for eight weeks, and you're going to record the stuff, and you're going to give them other materials and things that to me is a group program because it's live instead of a course, which I consider more packaged, um, if that makes sense. Any follow-up questions to that? 
There's a question from Rena. Do you recommend contracts for service-based offers? For example, content services. How do you um, implement, i.e. make sure they're honored? Contracts for international clients. Contracts are, you can totally do a contract for anything, but I don't, um, it depends on how much of an investment it is. If someone's investing five figures or more with me, yes, there's usually an agreement of some sort because I don't, I don't want them backing out. And I also don't want them to back out for their reasons, <laughs> like, you know, and, uh, and it is a bigger, there's a whole bunch of other things you give. So usually in that kind of a program, you front load a lot of the materials and, and a lot of the stuff that they get. So there's an agreement involved. Um, as far as regular one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, I don't do agreements for that usually. Um, as far as um, my publishing though, yes, I do, because I'm agreeing to do these tasks. And so graphic designers, um, any web designers probably should have some kind of proposal or an agreement of sort, yes. No further questions, back to you. Okay. All right. All right. And I'm watching the clock here. So let's see. Come on. Oh, I think I skipped one here. Yeah. Oh, no, I skipped two. My clickers is off. Okay. So your website, I talked about your website being the hub of your business. And this is my old website image, but the, I put this image on here because there's lots of video. I think the number one thing you want to, you want to look at your website from the eyes of someone who doesn't know you at all whatsoever. You want to build your website for people who have no idea who you are. No idea. The people who know you and or like or trust you will they'll search around a little bit. They'll look around and they'll spend a little bit more time, maybe a minute or two more or maybe longer than the people who just land there from some random link or get referred or whatever. Um, you need to build it for those people, which means in the very beginning of your homepage, it needs to say who this is for and why they should care and what you do or how you can help them. Like somehow, some way it needs to it needs to give that message, okay, in your brand or in your marketing or in the words that you put on the site. You need opt-in boxes and online forms. Please don't use the ones from like Wix or Weebly. Use the ones from your database management. So whatever database management software you're using, there's Keep, Infusionsoft, MailerLite, uh, MailChimp, Constant Contact. There's Those are the kinds I'm talking about. Whichever one you're using, Make sure you can use one, you're using one with forms on it and, and putting forms and you take those forms and stick it on your website, please, because then those people who fill out the forms will drop into your database. I see too many people marketing like Zoom registration links, which go into your inbox, but then you have to manually add them over to the database or using Facebook events uh, for registration and then trying to get those people to email uh, and get and put them in your database and trying all different kinds of things that I call manual labor chaos. So you want all your forms and opt-ins and all your pack things people are going to buy on your website to be linked and connected into your database so that everything flows in there easily and there's no manual labor entry of all that information. And then inside that database should have autoresponders or follow-up emails, right? that as soon as someone clicks or signs up or opts in, then it gets boop, sent them an email. Of course, you have to write all these email sequences, which I find a lot of entrepreneurs don't write enough email sequences. So even though you might have the best software, you still haven't taken the time to write all the sequences that need to happen to make people take the next step with you once they've opted in for something or signed up for something. You haven't given them the link or you're not reminding them to sign up for the call and here's my link to my scheduler and all these things. Because just because they got a free thing doesn't mean they're gonna look at it, read it or watch it. Just because they get access to a free call with you does not mean they're gonna sign up for you. You have to convince them to get the free stuff and to do the free stuff, it's ridiculous, I know. But it's so true. So have more of that. Have a form on your contact page, have a form on a free call page, and have a form on anything that you're giving away for free. Then more free gifts, clear offerings, please have a services page. Outline, at least talk to your ideal client on there. Even if you don't put packages and buttons for sale, at least talk to the ideal client, how I work, 
put a video on there of how you work, uh, and then lead them through the page, talking to them about what they what would matter most to them. This is sales copy, right? And then at the end, you can at least drive them to a free call to see if it's a good fit. If you're not going to put the buy now buttons and stuff like that, or if it's not a business, you're able to do that. Uh, photos, please have up to date photos of yourself and put them everywhere. Put photos of you and other people. Take photos and snapshots of calls you lead, of events when you're at um, events. Snap selfies with other people. You got to have more photos. You got to have more videos. Um, and then all of you could speak as well. So you could have a speaking topic or two or three, and you want a speaker page for that. And as soon as you can, get a video presentation of yourself, right? Roger takes a video, he gives me the video. I've got hundreds of videos of me presenting, um, but it's always good to have an up-to-date one. And if, if you don't have that many, this is like gold. This is gold. These recordings of these videos are like gold that you can then put on your website so people can see you in action and want to book you. So I'm a speaker booker. I book speakers too from my speaker network. And so I'm constantly looking for people who have good talks, who have good energy, who have the topic that I want. And I look at their websites and I make sure that they're up to date because I'm not gonna send somebody to a website that's out of date or out of style or not positioned well, or they don't look like they know what they're doing. I can't promote someone like that. Right? I just can't. So really pay attention to this website stuff, you guys. Get testimonials, hidden pages. It's so, so important. And I wish I could read all the chat, but I can't. So like, um, I'll read it at the end for sure. Uh, and number five was enlist a team, right? So here's a whole bunch of things in the beginning, especially if you're not delegating these things, these are the first things you probably want to delegate. Other than for some of you who might be in certain industries, and you might need a specialty assistant for what you're doing in your industry. Quick uh, question hidden, from Tracy. What is a hidden page? The hidden page is like uh, the landing pages that you might send people to. So like I did a, a Love Yourself Successful Summit around one of my books and we were get, doing a giveaway page, you know, with all the free giveaways. And so the pages I was taking people to uh, for those free gifts were not visible to the public on my website. They were a hidden page on my website. And so you can not have them be SEO'd and stuff. And so you can just, they're a page on your website, but nobody can see them unless they have the link. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So most entrepreneurs get uncomfortable stretching themselves and they don't do all this stuff because they get uncomfortable or they don't know what to do or they don't know how to do it. And stretching themselves is definitely outside their comfort zone. And so I just, I want to encourage you to like pick one or two of these areas where you know you need more work and then let's you know we'll brainstorm like what are some of the things to make you more efficient more profitable or more productive in that area or more successful or more happy depending on what areas you're picking so you're not going to tackle all these in one sitting you're not going to probably tackle all these in a month okay this is a lifetime of learning that i'm packing in here and so you're just going to have to decide like your order of importance. And so if your, your order of importance is money right now, generating income, then you want to make sure you're doing the right marketing activities. If you, if your order of importance is chaos, like you have a job and you're trying to start a business, but you have money coming in and you're kind of too busy for your own good, then I would look at systems and team and how to really systematize things in the back better. Okay. You have to spend time and stop and work on these things in your business or you're not going to get very far, right? So here's some steps you can take now, um, figure out what you can do next to really do whatever step uh, you would like to do. You're welcome to come to a call with me. I am not going to be able to get your credit card over the phone unless you want to give it to me. So please don't say, oh, this is a sales call because you've heard how much I give on this. And uh, I don't want to work with you if you don't want to work with me, but I might be able to impart a couple really important things on, to you before we end our call if you come to a call with me. No pressure though, because I don't want to, like I said, I only want to talk to those who are highly motivated to really be a more successful and profitable entrepreneur. So that link is in the chat, but I'll put it in again. 
um, you can get some free trainings. Okay, go sample me again, go try some other things. I've got a how to become an author training on my website, how to become a speaker training. I've got that need number worksheet that you can figure out your big money goal. I've got um, a, a training on the 17 things you need on your website, if that's something you're working on please go get a free training. You can also come to one of my free masterclasses that is happening this month. This Thursday, I'm doing one on jumpstarting your marketing. Next Thursday, I'm doing one to jumpstart your follow-up. And the last Thursday of March, I'm doing one to jumpstart your book. So for those of you who want to write a book or something, all of those are free. You have to be live for the live ones coming up. I'm not giving out the recording, um, but the free trainings are already pre-recorded. Uh, and then I have a couple other paid trainings coming up, but um, go look at the event page. And then of course, there's a lot of books. And these are the ones I have for sale, the Love Yourself Successful book. I just relaunched the second edition. Um, you are welcome to get that. I'm actually giving away a whole bunch of free trainings with that right now because it's still on pre-launch. If you go to loveyourselfsuccessful.com, the Jumpstart Your New Business Now is perfect for all of you guys starting up a business. It's only like $16.95, you guys. Low risk. Go get the book. It's all the practical, tactical things you need to really get started in a business and the things you don't need to worry about that you can just stay focused. So there's a question from Ada. What amount of minimum budget range might I need to enlist and hire a team to get the ball rolling in my business? It depends what you want to delegate and what you need done. Most people need the um, social media management. They need the um, follow-up stuff done um, and or data entry or techie stuff. Who's Ada? Where did she go? Uh, Ada's in the chat. Oh, in the chat. In the chat. Dagmar says that your resources are awesome. <laughs> so do we have any uh, concluding questions for Katrina? Ada, just to, you know, like there's all kinds of different virtual assistants or techie people. There's plenty of people in the Philippines and across the country, you know, out of the country. Um, I, it's, I don't trust people that I can't talk to though with passwords and logins. So those kinds of, so I don't usually hire people for really cheap unless they're doing graphic design, transcription, data entry, that kind of thing. So be careful who you hire, unless you get referred to somebody who's amazing and they say they're amazing. Um, so website stuff, when someone has to log in or I'm in my database, which is my gold, uh, someone has to log in, I have to be able to have a conversation with my assistant. So I pay more like 40 or $50 an hour for my assistants, but sometimes you can find people for anywhere from seven to $25 an hour. So it kind of just depends. Yeah. And uh, 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 Financial projection. Um, before, you not, before you answer that, let me ask, answer an earlier question. On April the 23rd, we a uh, Saturday, we have a speaker whose subject is how to save a ton of money by working with a Filipina virtual assistant. Great. So that might serve your interests to attend that April the 23rd, 10 a.m. Pacific. Yeah. And Thank I know you. a lot of the sites that have like Fiverr and Upwork, a lot of those have vetted people. And so they might be a little bit more trustworthy, but it's hard for me to delegate something just via message or email i like to be able to talk through what i'm doing with somebody and so and they record it so i talk to my assistants on zoom we record it i say this is all i want done and this is what to say blah 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 you know and i record it all and then i go away and they go figure out how to do it all <laughs> and that's what works for me <laughs> um Yes, you can totally get people in the other countries. I would definitely um, ask for referrals. So this is where you just wanna ask. So you'd come on here and you'd say, who has virtual assistants? But don't just ask for a virtual assistant, please ask for someone specifically. Like if you have MailChimp and WordPress as your website, say, I need a techie person who can do my email newsletters with, um, with MailChimp and also make updates in my WordPress website. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't just say, I need an assistant because that's too vague and they're all different and they all work on different platforms. Awesome. I don't, I, 
financial project projection, I just talk about making more money. So I talk about how to get to your goals, right? Is it 8,000 a month and then it's 10,000 a month and then it's $20,000 a month and then it's 30 and then where to save all that or invest that. And then we hand people off to financial advisors from there when they start making excess money where they can go put it away. Um, I, I, you know, I'm the practical tactical girl who's gonna show you how to make money right now. <laughs> So Ada is asking, please put link gotcha. to schedule a chat with Katrina or whatever yeah. contact she made available as I came in a bit late and missed it. So Ada wants your... Yes, sorry, thank you. Here's that. And then here's the other. The need number worksheet. I'm telling you, it's a good thing, you guys. And there's a video that goes with it. You want to watch the video. Don't just print out the thing. Um, and then. Okay, who has got a final question? We have time for one question for Katrina. And then we'll wrap her up for the evening. There's all my links. And I do check my own emails. So if you send me an email from any of the websites or social media, I will see it. It looks like you have been so thorough that <laughs> you have undermined the need for any questions. So Katrina, on behalf of EIN's 80-ish thousand members, uh, I thank you hugely for this information. You have just packed in. Uh, so much stuff about the basics of a business, stuff that uh, seasoned entrepreneurs have forgotten but need need to come back to, because if you get those basics wrong, everything else is such a struggle pushing a big rock up a very steep hill. So thank you. Do you have any final words? Uh. My words are, I've been speaking all day. Are you kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> all right. I no, will... just, you know, don't be shy. <laughs> Reach out. <laughs> I love to help. 